Hello everybody, this is Jake here. I know it's been uh, like a week since I last posted uh, a few of my videos um, talking about uh, my autism and how I've been able to manage things. And this has been a really fun week for me because uh, I recently became involved with a uh, some friends who have a, a company where they teach uh, animation uh, to teenagers. And I, uh, so this whole week I spent every morning um, teaching on Zoom animation skills. And that was really fun for me. And I felt like it helped kind of untangle some uh, creative blocks that I had within myself. So it was really good. Um, I put a lot of time into that. Um, you know, there are kind of long days started pretty early, but um, I didn't really have much. Uh, I guess I just need to completely focus on that in the moment. And uh, I think for the rest of the day, I felt a little bit too tired maybe to set up a camera and try to make a, a video about something. And uh, as I said in the past, sometimes, you know, I just need to do it as easy as possible. And so uh, me trying to fix myself up, you know, looking ready for a video or clean my space, <laughs> um, you know, it's just too much work. So, um, so yeah, things are going pretty good there. And I was thinking that, um, so this week, what was really nice <clears throat> was uh, being able to teach beginners techniques about animation. And as I mentioned before, um, I felt like I have been in development for a long period of time. Um, doing uh, animation, learning about it, and same with music. And it's nice. Well, so I realized that um, I've had trouble in school before. And I, you know, even when I've taken art and music classes, I found some really good teachers um, that I'll make a list about sometime that uh, helped me learn you know, music and singing techniques, uh, art techniques, even fitness. Um, there's a few different schools that, you know, and I guess I feel like I'm pretty loyal to them. When I, when I find somebody I like, it's almost my habit <laughs> to kind of be obsessed with that and, uh, and stick to it. And now I'm being more well-rounded, um, being open to learning from different schools of thought. But um, basically what I'm getting at is that um, I had some good instruction from some good teachers, but I've noticed that a big portion, since I've had issues learning in school, um, I had to teach myself a lot, my own self-study, um, so I've bought so many art books and, uh, and, and learned techniques, uh, kind of become an encyclopedia about it. Uh, even sometimes when I go to the gym too, when I meet people and we talk about our routines, I go into all the geeky details of things that I've learned and ways of doing it. And, um, and so in a way, I feel like I'm a natural teacher and I will often maybe kind of teach people even if uh, they didn't ask <laughs> to be taught, you know, and I'm learning a bit better sometimes about, you know, how much information to share, not oversharing. And so this week uh, with teaching animation was really fun because, uh, you know, I got to help them. And I think because I had a hard time learning in school, I had to learn things my own way. And, uh, and I felt good about sharing my insights on it. 
Um, and if that's a little bit vague, you know, I'll try to give you an example of, uh, you know, like, let's say a person, you know, um, when they do art, they have really nice colors, right? And they go like, oh, okay, how do you pick those colors? And then sometimes they'd be like, you know, I don't know, I just pick colors, you know? For me, I maybe like to get a little bit more philosophical or deep about things with colors where, you know, I'm read things in, in books about like, you know, um, sometimes you can pick colors and then, or maybe pick your colors first, you know, so you have like a scene where you have, um, you know, like a, a sky and grass and all this stuff. And maybe you can pick a color palette first of maybe four or five colors that you can use. And so you you look at those colors together, that combination of just the colors, and they go, okay, these are the colors that I'm going to color with. Um, or uh, some things about, you know, to give a little bit more emphasis, you know, on a certain color. Like, let's say it's a very colorful, saturated red. All the other colors that you use with that, maybe you might have them be slightly more gray or less colorful, and it gives the red more pop, you know. And with music, too, you know, I've had times before where I've asked certain music teachers um, questions about, you know, how, you know, because I want to write songs and, and I want to understand music more, wanting to learn a little bit about maybe certain chords that would sound more romantic or pretty or, you know, just the emotional feeling that chords or music gives. And uh, sometimes when you ask questions like that that are a little bit, you know, philosophical or whatever, you know, seems like sometimes people might either either not really give an answer or they, you know, uh, might, you know, kind of just say like, what are you talking about? You know, that's just, but uh, that's the way that, you know, I like to think. And um, in any ways, what that comes down to is my teaching style you know, I like to get really deep about certain things. You know, why does a, sa a song sound good? You know, uh, why do certain lyrics in a song, when it's sung a certain way, just really hits you, you know? Um, so yeah, there's stuff like that. And uh when I'm teaching, I know somebody coming into it for the first time, it could be a little much to, um, a little bit much to try to get that philosophical um, right off the bat. But uh, I think it's good to think things in, you know, different ways and having, when you have a real understanding of it, you could be more flexible. So if I were to teach a student, you know, something one way and they don't get it, because I understand it, or I, I feel like I have an understanding of it, um, you know, I can, I have different ways of trying to express it. So, uh, so yeah, that was really good to me. And um, I'm going to be, uh, think maybe later today. Sometimes I like to try to post one video a day or something, just because that seems smart. But uh, just to go with the flow here, um, I, uh, I think I'll be making um, some videos about my opinions on like how to teach music like teaching people, like one of the things, I'm going to try to keep this under 15 minutes, but um, one of the things that I've been enjoying doing, teaching new people, I've had a, uh, a family that I've been teaching recently on Saturdays, uh, two grandparents and their granddaughter, and I had this method of wanting to teach them music, and it's very focused more on... Um, simple 
music theory, uh, ear training, and singing, you know. So we often start with piano because it's pretty easy and I could kind of explain the piano in a way that is understandable. Sometimes we go to the piano and we just see all these black and white keys and, you know, we start hearing about where to put your fingers and A's and B's and sharps and flats and all this stuff. And uh, oftentimes it's kind of hard. It's like, you know, every time you want to learn a new song, you just go, okay, where do I put my fingers? And music is a hearing art. So, you know, being able to work a little bit more so that you understand it a bit better. And you can take something you hear in your head and sing it out loud and then find it on pretty much any instrument, like a guitar, you know. Um, so those are some things that I've been working on. And then the other thing I've realized too, because I've been getting into some like drum meditation stuff. There's a really good Udemy course that I uh, have enjoyed. Um, this guy named, uh, I think his name is Kwame Saraba. He's an African man who teaches djembe, and he's also really positive and has some methods on, um, you know, like being happy and enjoying life and stuff. And uh, <clears throat> he has some drum meditations on uh, courses on Udemy. So something that I've been <clears throat> realizing too is that <clears throat> oftentimes, sorry, I got something in my throat. <clears> throat> Um, that I think art and music and other creative things, it's maybe you've heard of brain waves, brain wave states before, like, you know, beta brain waves, alpha brain waves, delta, gamma, all this stuff. Um, this is apparently something like when you go to sleep, your brain waves go into a different state. And when you're in a meditative state, your brain goes. And when you are in danger or when you're worried or stressed or focused on things, you're in different brainwave states. And to be creative, what I am starting to realize or believe is that we need to get into a meditative brainwave state, like an alpha brainwave um, to be able to create and, and receive inspiration, uh, creative ideas. So something that I've been starting to do too is do a bit of a drum meditation, something very repetitive that you just play for an extended period of time, like five, 10, 15 minutes, and you can play it with a group like a do, 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 ah, oh, oh, ah, oh, oh, ah. That's what uh, Kwame Saraba teaches, he vocalizes what you play on the djembe drum, this African drum. And uh, you play it for a bit, and as you do it, you get into a bit of a trance state, you know? Going to a drum circle will do that too. And I think it's fun because you don't have to think too much about the complex harmony or whatever. It's just a very repetitive pattern that you can kind of relax to. And, uh, and when you do that, it kind of gets you in a certain place where you feel relaxed and there's a joy and a peace. You become very present. And, uh, and so with my students, the grandparents and the granddaughter, that's kind of how we've been starting a bit, is doing the drum meditation for like five minutes. And then we'll go into... Um, you know, a lesson and focus more on singing everything like the major scale, the do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, you know, thing. Practice singing it and internalizing it in your mind. Um, even taking chords, you know, like there's a C major chord and a C major chord has three notes in it, C, E, and G. Playing that, singing it, maybe singing the notes in it. Um, stuff like that so that you really feel comfortable with it. So I'm going to share a video where I show you this uh, method and I also have ones um, 
in art as well. So we're coming up to 15. Here's the end of it.